Hey everybody, this is Aaron from Aaron's Audio Corner, and I'm going to do a comparison between Cali Audio's new LP6 V2 and the LP6 or LP8, LP8 V2. So come along, go for the ride with me, and we'll discuss the pros and cons and why you might want one over the other. Physically, the speakers are roughly the same as far as aesthetic. You see a plastic front, you've got MDF enclosure, and then you've got built-in amplifier with XLR, TRS, RCA inputs. And I'll spin this one around, show you the backside. So you can also see a series of dip switches that allow you to make adjustments depending on the positioning of the speaker. So if you want to place it free air away from the wall or free air near the wall, if you want to place it on a console, or if you want to place it on a desk stand, you just make the appropriate adjustment on the dip switches on the back and you are in business. I did test the LP6 V2 already. So if you want to see a little bit more of a deep dive into the results of that, click the card up here, go follow that. But this video is really going to focus on just the differences between these two and why, again, you may want one more than the other. I think the easiest way to put it, get in, get out, right? The bluff, bottom line up front, is that the LP8 with its eight inch woofer has the ability to get louder. You would also think it has the ability to go lower and it does, but only by about three Hertz or so. It's really not much. Both speakers have no problem playing flat, not just, an, or not just in room, but flat anechoically. So even in room, it's gonna be even flatter than that or give you more boost, I should say. They both have the ability to play anechoically flat down to about 40 Hertz. The roll off of each, pretty much the same thing, about a 24 dB per octave fall off rate, typical with a ported enclosure. And this one, the eight, does have just a smidgen more output in the low frequencies, but it's already so low relative to the mid range that you're still gonna want a subwoofer. Now, Cali makes a dedicated subwoofer that you have the ability to plug these speakers into, and it's really neat. I have not tested it yet, but I've seen it a couple times and been kind of curious about it and, and to see how it would work because it also has dip switches where you could say, hey, subwoofer, I'm using this speaker, and it knows how to adjust the bass crossover point accordingly. I should also mention that both of these speakers came from Cali Audio directly. They were sent on loan for me to review, although they never and they still have not seen this review and they do not see my other reviews until it's published for everybody else. So there is no influencing of what I should say or what I can say about it. That's why I also love data because if I can prove my data is correct, then it's hard to argue against it. And in this case, the data indicates really good performance for both of these speakers. Now this one, I believe 400 bucks a pair for the six inch version. And this is 500 bucks for a pair of the eight inch version. Or you can buy them in singles if you'd like to, and you could have a multi-channel setup if you want to do something like that. I think they are truly fantastic speakers for their price. And I honestly, honestly don't know that I've come across any powered speakers that are better value. And I would say, even if I'm comparing to passive speakers, because these have everything built into it with the ability to adjust the equalization on the fly via the dip switches, that allows you to put the speakers pretty much wherever you want. The on-axis response is really quite smooth. There are some peaks and dips. The eight inch is less linear in response than the six inch. The eight inch features some features. The eight inch has some resonances in the upper mid range. So around like the 800 to one kilohertz area. And there was some areas where I kind of found bothersome. I think it was like around 600 Hertz or so where it kind of stood out to me as uh, too chesty. And in my write up, I described the fact that normally when I say chesty, I mean the lower vocal region, but the sound that I was getting was more of a chesty sound. So it could have been harmonics. I'm not really sure, but that's really the best way I can describe it. With the LP6, it's a more linear speaker, but it does have some resonance uh, between like one to two kilohertz, give or take. Now, both of these resonances are not anything that would be terribly offensive, especially with the six inch version. And for that reason, I personally prefer the six inch version. The thing that the eight inch version does better than the six inch version is the built-in limiter. What does that mean? A built-in limiter for a speaker basically just cuts power to a speaker as you turn the volume up and it does that to protect the speaker. So it's a protection circuit, essentially. 
And you would need that so you don't wind up blowing the speakers. Now, pretty much every passive speaker that I've ever tested or seen tested has a built-in limiter. That's pretty much the de facto thing with standard studio monitors these days. And the cool thing about the 8-inch version is it gives you about, I think, 2 dB or so more of dynamic range than the 6-inch version. And that really comes in handy on the lower end below about maybe 200 hertz. And we'll talk about that in the data in a little bit. But overall, I would say that if you're trying to look at these two speakers and you're really not sure, you know, do you spend the extra 100 bucks and get the LP8 V2 or do you save a little bit of change and get the 6? I would say that really just comes into output needs. If you're listening near field, the six is plenty fine. Don't worry about getting the six because I doubt seriously that you're going to run into output issues. If you are far away from the speakers, maybe if you're mid to far field, let's say about three meters or so, maybe even more, you would probably want to consider getting the eight inch version because it, again, it does have a little bit more output capability and dynamic range, especially if you're talking about you know, getting into the home theater segment or hi-fi segment where you're going to be sitting further away than you would if you were mixing on these like you would if you were producing you know, music or anything of that nature. So again, I think just to kind of sum that up, personally, I prefer the six for closer listening. If you're going to be listening far away, say three meters or more, the eight's probably your better bet. Tonally, both speakers are very similar. This one has a little bit more of the resonance in the upper mid-range to mid-range area, whereas this one has a little bit more resonance in the one to two kilohertz region. So it really just depends on what your specific needs are and what trade-offs you're willing to accept. Both speakers are really quite great. Horizontal spread is really good. The vertical directivity is really the only problem. And when I say it's really the only problem, it's not terrible. I've seen worse for sure. But the horizontal radiation pattern is smooth as butter. And it's probably one of the better ones that I've seen, uh, certainly in this price range. So let's jump over to the data. We'll fly through some of this and we'll hit the highlights and help you figure out why I'm saying what I'm saying and why I heard what I heard in my demos. This was, again, all measured with the Clippled Near Field Scanner, which is a way to get anechoic data in a non-anechoic environment, or for example, my garage, as you see here in this video. If you are curious about how that works, I do have a video and I will link it at the top left. Yeah, you're right, my left. And you can follow that for some explanation and discussion about what the Near Field Scanner is. So first, let's start with the Kali LP6 V2. And what you see here is the spinorama data and black is the on axis, green dashed is the listening window, and then the other lines are also provided to you in the legend above. The thing that I'm going to point out here is what I said that I heard in my evaluation. Uh, this little bit of a resonance right through here, you know, it, it didn't seem to be bothersome to me. I would say that you might want to have some EQ handy to knock that down a little bit. It seems to come from the cabinet walls resonating, or it could actually be the port. I'm really not sure. But luckily, it's low enough in amplitude that it's really not disturbing. However, it is spread out over about maybe, I don't know, a third or two thirds of an octave. So again, if you have some equalization, you might be able to knock that down, especially since you're listening in the near field. Going a little bit further, you can see there's a dip in the response as it hands off to the tweeter area. And we get a little bit of a bump around four kilohertz or so, and then takes off above the high frequency area around like 12 kilohertz or so, but there's not a lot of musical content in the high frequencies. And I see this kind of thing very prevalently in waveguide designs where there's a little bit of an extra boost in the very high frequencies. Whether or not that's gonna be offensive to you, I cannot say, but again, you could equalize it down if you wanted to. Now let's look at the LP8 V2 comparison. And this is the issue that I was hearing. I think I may have misspoke and said it was the LP6 where I said it was around 600 hertz or so. It was a bit of a resonance. And yeah, this kind of bothered me. And I did EQ this down, I think is about one and a half dB. And by doing that, it seemed to provide a little bit more clarity to the vocals. More notably, the female vocals where their fundamentals are a little bit higher, which means their harmonics are a little bit higher. Of course, certainly it depends on the vocalist because Women can sing low and men can sing high. So it really just kind of depends on what you're looking for. But I would say that you are lucky that you can do some equalization there. The speaker would take reasonably well to it, again, especially since you're sitting near field. But the early reflections directivity index only shows a little bit of a, a dip there. And I think that you probably be, would be okay 
if you applied some EQ there to knock that down like I did. The other thing that kind of stands out to me is there's a bit of a bass boost. And again, if I go back to the LP6 V2, you can see that the LP6 V2 has a little bit of a dip right there. And honestly, I don't know that anybody's going to be able to hear that, especially hearing it through the room. But it's interesting that they differ in that regard. And you can see that there is a little bit more of a shallow roll off to the LP8. So you do get just a smidge, a smidge more bass, but you're still going to need a subwoofer to get you any lower than maybe about 30 hertz or so in room, I would say. Uh, and that also depends on placement as well. So just keep that in mind. And again, I would recommend maybe you shop the Cali Audio subwoofer. I don't even recall the, the model number, but I think it's about 500 bucks or so. And it seems like a reasonable, reasonable price. Now we're going to look at the estimated in-room response here. And this is taken at about two meters or the calculation is done for a listening distance of about two meters. So if you're listening that far out, this is probably what you can expect in your room, certainly above maybe five, six, 700 Hertz, because below that frequency is where your room really dominates the sound. What we can see here is that you got a little bit of a bump around this 1.2 kilohertz area. And again, I said that you could probably apply some EQ and be okay with that. The high frequency is a little bit flat in here. And depending on your preference, you may or may not like that. Now, the reason that high frequency is plateaued a little bit is because there's a little bit more extra energy being sent out to the side off axis in those high frequency areas. In the past, I will say that when I see a plateaued estimated in-room response, that generally indicates to me that it's going to sound a little bit, again, I use the word bright, but I think everybody kind of understands what I mean with that word. It may or may not be problematic for you. I don't think it was problematic for me, or I should say it wasn't problematic for me. Maybe a little bit of EQ might have even improved the system a little bit, but I didn't even try it, to be honest with you. Now moving on to the LP8 V2, we can see, yes, the mid-range resonances are really prevalent again through here, and there's what really causes the linearity to be skewed. But otherwise, you know, you have a really smooth fall-off in response. And again, I'll mention that these are done at two meters. The measurement here that you're seeing is referenced for two meters. So if you move closer to the speaker, you're going to get more direct sound, which means you're going to get even more lifted treble. So that's one of the things to keep in mind with estimated in-room response. Uh, depending on your room, if you have curtains, if you have furnishings, if you have uh, wall treatments and things of that nature, that high frequency will change a little bit. But for the most part, you can pretty much write a check on being able to match that target curve within a few dB, plus or minus. Now we're gonna look at the horizontal radiation pattern between the LP6, as you see here, versus the LP8. And the thing that I'm noticing is that the LP6 seems to have a little bit wider dispersion in the higher frequencies versus the LP8, but otherwise they seem to radiate roughly the same into the room. So again, room treatment, furnishings, things of that nature, that's just things that you'll have to consider like you would with any other speaker in the world. And you may or may not find the speaker needs a little bit of EQ on the top end. Heck, you may like it as is. Harmonic distortion taken at 96 dB at one meter for a single speaker. This is the LP6. And this is the LP8. And you can pretty much tell right away that the main difference is through the lower mid range. The LP6 is a little bit higher in distortion. But again, keep in mind that the listening distance for these speakers are going to be such that you probably aren't going to be pushing them to this kind of level. Uh, reference to your listening position. So like say maybe a meter or two meters out with the LP8, you can get a little bit louder and that's really what this data is showing you. And speaking of being able to get a little bit louder, this is the compression testing for the LP6. And you can see that there is some compression limiting taken in place through the mid range, certainly at all levels. And then on the lower end at the higher levels and at 102 dB reference to 76 dB, there's quite a bit of limiting going on, which means that as you turn the volume up, you're going to get less bass output. Now, that's pretty standard, and if you're a sound engineer, you kind of expect that going into it, but I think it's nice to see in graphical format so you really understand the differences. And speaking of those differences, the LP8. Now, the LP8 has about one and a half, maybe to two dB less limiting than the LP6, which again is here. So that's why I say that you can actually turn these speakers up a little bit louder, the LP8, and or listen to them a little bit further away than you can the LP6. And that to me is really the driving difference between these two speakers in terms of why you would want to buy the LP8. And that does it for this video. I hope you learned something. I hope you enjoyed it. And I hope I gave you some good insight into why 
you might get one of these speakers over the other. If you are not a subscriber, I would appreciate it if you hit the subscribe button and ring the bell and all that cool stuff because it makes me feel good inside. <laughs> also, if you are interested in this content and you want to help support the channel, I do have a Patreon page that's in the uh, description below and you can go that route if you'd like to. And for now, I will sign out and I will wish you all a good afternoon. Take care.